Um, the use case is around semantic product lifecycle management and how knowledge graphs can help with that. Um, Product structures are multi-dimensional hierarchies by nature, and product life cycles are usually split up by phases and disciplines, which naturally create silos. So this demo is going to show you how, how we integrate data throughout the product life cycle, providing transparency over the so-called product DNA, reducing time to market, enhancing configuration management, enabling design to line workflows, and much more. This is obviously uh, an extract of, uh, of all these use cases, but um, I think it will give you a pretty good idea on how PLM with knowledge graphs can work. All right, so let's start with the demo. Um, Enzo is uh, basically guiding you through the whole workflow of creating something like knowledge graph for PLM. Um, we have these four stages. Um, onboarding stage where you get all your data sources. Um, the modeling is where you create your canonical model and the target ontology to map your data into. Um, the blending layer, which is the heart of the of ANZO where you basically where you basically connect all your data and map it to the target ontology. And then the access um, part where you build um, low, low code framework based um, applications or dashboards uh, on top of the knowledge graph. So let's look at the PLM graph map that we have here. So we have an explore tab that um, will give you a, a good idea about what's going on in this in this in this graph map in this part that's planning everything. And you can see here that we have four different data sources, um, most of them dealing with either sales figures or PLM data or um, suppliers um, and. Basically, the canonical model looks pretty simple for this data, right? We have the different car configurations. Uh, the car configurations consist of parts. Parts are organized in a hierarchical nature. And we have suppliers supplying these parts. And you can see here that directly while, while we're traversing through this ontology um, that is built with, with the Ansel Ontology Editor, um, we can see here the, the data profiles and um, also the, the attributes that are that are there in the tables, which is a good indicator to get to get just a grasp, a grasp of your data of your sources and what's going on there. Um, we're going to go to the data layers that are actually there to a load the data right from all the different sources. In this case, like SAP and Team Center, um, we basically load also other virtualized data sources for like uh, push down queries to get data from different sources. And then the interesting part comes where we actually connect all the data, right? So we transform the sales data to the target ontology, we, the supply chain management, the bomb data. Um, and if you look at this, these are basically queries that take the source data and map it to the target ontology. For example, saying that in this table, we have suppliers that belong to the class supplier and define some of the attributes. Obviously, this is something that, um, that requires knowledge of Sparkle and will take some time. That's why there's also an automated way of doing that. And we have a feature that basically lets you do a, let's say, fuzzy match and say, okay, I'm interested in a threshold of 20% of finding similarities between the different objects and different sources. And I'm just gonna hit find connections and it's gonna generate this new layer. And while, while it does that, um, let's take a quick look of what we have here in the third layer. We actually have a uh, pre-calculation of some product structure KPIs, like page rank calculations, which tells you how important the part is for the whole product structure, right? Based on its connections to other parts and based on how many changes will be required in the manufacturing line. Um, so, um, something else that we're doing is the is the uh, is implementing all these graph algorithms and making them making them very easy to use within Sparkle. Um, so now this fuzzy match layer is generated, and you can see here that it has three different suggestions for matches. Some of them um, higher than others, and uh, you, we can see here that, for example, this layer with a sixty-seven point three seven percent overlap. 
um, is telling us that there are some parts in the sales list and in the bombs that are actually the same. So we can go there and basically have already a Sparkle query generated. Um, now it's very easy for users who are maybe also not very proficient with Sparkle, but just adjust, uh, adjust these mappings and basically map the data to the target ontology. So if we go now to the access part, we have here a, uh, a dashboard that lets us analyze the supplier criticality based on how many parts a supplier supplies, how many configurations are affected, and how many different parts a supplier actually supplies. So all this is basically built by just um, by just clicking by just clicking um, through the knowledge graph and traversing traversing the knowledge graph and selecting relations that I'm interested in. So we can build all these um, all these tables very easily by just saying, okay, I'm interested in, for example, a path like this, and I'm basically all I'm doing is just clicking and navigating through the different things that through different relations in my graph, um, which lets really business users very easily interact with the knowledge graph by just understanding this canonical model without um, really needing to know what, what, um, what happens underneath and what data sources look like. And the interesting th thing here is we, we can actually, the supplier criticality actually lets us um, analyze which suppliers are critical for our company? Like what happens if, um, if the contracts change or the suppliers go bankrupt or whatever? How dependent are we actually on the supplier? And we combine here data from these different sources to know how many different configurations are affected and how often are these configurations sold and how many different parts from one single supplier they have, which you can see here in this bubble chart. And you can use these filters that will dynamically basically, basically filter all your, um, all your views and so generate Sparkle queries automatically. Um, just to show you the capabilities of, um, of, uh, of the network navigator, you also can, um, or, or in general of high res So you've seen already the network navigator with, um, with Emily, but you, you can basically, you can basically use that to, to have a, have a, to generate a better transparency over your product structures um, to navigate through them to see their relations. Um, you can build dashboards that um, show you some, uh, for example, page rank scores or something between a centrality based on some other graph algorithms. You have this full flexibility. Um, for product structures, obviously page rank scores are very interesting to identify like which parts shouldn't be touched or changed or will have uh, very big consequences. Um, you can look at um, patterns in graphs that will indicate problems, for example, cycles, right? If you're in a hierarchy of parts, you have a cycle and let's say I'm a father of my grandfather, then you're like, okay, there's probably something wrong and graphs are just great to, to analyze that. Um, and you, you can generate views that will automatically calculate layers uh, or ca calculate levels. Um, and so on. So th this really makes it very easy for you to create a dashboard from, with knowledge from all these different sources, and let you let you really um, let you really get get good transparency transparency over your product structures and make uh, really better decisions. All right, that's it from me. Um, knowledge graphs around PLM.